Hey everybody, I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips. Welcome to ClayShare. And now we have our live broadcast that I do every week from the studio. I just want to give everybody a huge thank you for all your messages and thoughts and prayers for me. I have, um, I've been sick this last week with, with the flu, I'm guessing is what it was. I'm still not 100%, but I'm going to do a little bit because I can't do nothing. And um, I, I was tested for COVID. That came back negative yesterday, thank goodness. And we know it's not that, so it's tr probably just the flu. So I'm not going to overdo it, but we are going to make cute little pumpkin trinket dishes, although you don't have to make pumpkins if you don't want to. You could make little flowers or just little circle dishes. So we're going to do the process, and as I do it, you can see ways you can modify and change it for your own tastes. So if you don't want pumpkin dishes, don't do pumpkin dishes. Now, the pumpkin trinket dish, these little guys right here, this is actually a free class on ClayShare.com. So if you want a class version, not live, because when I do live broadcasts, it's open to comments, right? And I answer and we have a conversation, so there's interruptions. It's not a straight through tutorial. If you want that, go to ClayShare.com. You can browse everything for free if you're not a premium member, right? Or you can watch all of our free classes because they're free. So check those out. We have about 10 or more, I don't know how many anymore, maybe a little more. And uh, I think our clay quickies were free too. So we have free classes and clay quickies. Both those are free. And all of the live that I do for Live at Five, my five o'clock broadcasts are always free. And those are up there. So you can watch replays of those as well. All right. So this is a fun little way to make dishes. I actually started doing this as a way to make test tiles quickly that would be consistent and would give me good results every time. And it would just be pressing little dishes. And then this expanded from little dishes to making you know big press plates or press platters. And I have a lot of classes on making press trays. Uh, there is a press plate class and um, tea bag holder, I think, spoon rest. There's a whole bunch in there. So you can check all of those out as well. All right. What else do we have going in Clay Sherland? Ooh, you know we're giving away 100 pounds of glaze. That's right, we are. Clayscapes Pottery, who you know sells my glazes. I have a line of six glazes that I've developed. I can show you the colors. Orbe, Cranberry, Spearmint, Lake Blue, Cobblestone, and of course, the first one, my Chun Blue, that started it all. So all six of these are available from them, but my Orbe and my Cranberry are brand new. Here they are on bigger pieces. And we're giving away to 10 winners a five pound box of each. So 10 people are gonna get these before you can buy them and make awesome things with them. But you can pre-order them. They'll be out first week of November. So you can pre-order them now. So that's what I got for news. What else do we have for news? Oh, new clay share class for my premium members. Oh my gosh, this class is huge. This class was 90 minutes, 90 minutes long. It didn't take 90 minutes to film. It took me two days to film, but it was 90 minutes of instruction, includes templates, step-by-step -step how to glaze this exact piece right here. Oh my goodness. This is the pumpkin vase class. So this one came out yesterday, brand new class and it has so much in it. I think you will love it. It's a hand building class. I know I love it. So if you haven't checked that out, do so. And let me know what you think about it. We also have, as you see behind me, a whole bunch of other autumn themed, specifically pumpkin themed classes. We have this spooktacular jack-o'-lantern, which we're gonna be making in my private broadcast for premium members tonight. We're gonna make one of these. We have the harvest pumpkin, which I've got a few of these awesome pumpkin sculptures. You might be seeing these all over the internet. Well, they're mine. I started making these, I think, three, four years ago, and they have kind of taken off. So if you see these, I actually designed them. So they're awesome. This one was done with Raku. I did over at Clayscapes Pottery. So check that one out. And then we have my owl lantern. If you want to make a little owl lantern, that's very autumnal, right? And then we have our sweet little pinch pumpkins. Look at this one. This one is so tiny, I can hardly hold it. Little pinchkins. So little pinch projects, which is a great place to start if you're a beginner 
in pottery. And that's, I think, all the news. No, Doug Peltzman has a workshop. That's what it is. Getting a Handle on Handles with Doug Peltzman. That's going to be in November. It's a two-part workshop. It's going to be a live virtual workshop. You'll be able to watch it on the ClayShare app on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and of course on ClayShare.com. So check that out if you need a little help getting a handle on your handles. All right. So if, I'm going to try not to lose my voice. When I'm sick, I lose my voice. That's just how everything is. But I got all the news out to, you, to everybody. So we're just going to start. And I'm going to roll out a slab, and I think we'll roll to our overhead camera. And at any point, if you have questions about anything, it doesn't necessarily have to be the project I'm working on, please, please ask. So I've got a little ball of clay here. Actually, I think I want a, the blue platter behind me. Uh, I saw that. Is that a class? Yes. This one here, uh, Christine. Yeah. This was um, this was this was spraying glaze, and this was just making a plate using um, using a, a template. So it's not this exact shape, but yeah. And we, I show you how to get the glaze this way, though. It's a spray on glaze. So if you ever want to know how to spray your glazes on your pottery, I have a spraying on glaze class on ClayShare. We spray this one and uh, I think four other things we sprayed the glaze on. But this is a large plate which we made either in a class or in a live. I'll have to look that up for you, Christine. I'll look it up. I'll figure that out for you, hon. All right, so I have a lump of clay here. I would say it's about a pound and a half. Doesn't really matter. We're going to roll it out flat. You can use however much you have. And I'm just going to start. And I use my rolling pin to pre-flatten everything. Now, I do have a slab roller. And usually, when I'm going to be making a bunch of projects like this, I'll roll out a big slab. But for this, since I know most people out there might not have access to a slab roller, I wanted to show you an easy way to do it. So I'm just going to roll now. And I do have a really great free class called Rolling a Slab on ClayShare. And that is a really good intro to hand building. And it just shows you how to roll a slab evenly with nothing but a rolling pin and a flat surface. Because that's really all you need. Flip this over. It's just like rolling out pie crust. And I know many of us are also bakers, right? We like to bake. So you got the skills. You can do this. So I've rolled this out till it's about eh, three eighths of an inch thick. The board that I'm using, I think Kevin addressed that already, but the work board I'm using is three quarter inch birch plywood that has two coats of water-based polyurethane on it. And you notice my clay is not sticking. It's very, very light application of the polyurethane. And you know, I put that on there because if not the boards can warp over time and start to delaminate because it is plywood. Let me get my rib. So we're just going to smooth the surface. And since, you know, it's fall, it's October. It's all about pumpkins right now. So we're going to make pumpkin trinket dishes. I picked up this pumpkin cookie cutter. I do not know where anymore. <laughs> it was very inexpensive though. It's plastic, so you, can, you know it's not a fancy one. But it's, it's kind of big. It's about four and a half inches. I would say, and that's a really nice size for making these trinket dishes. Believe it or not, this one here will shrink to this. I'm not kidding. This here will shrink to this. So Barb says, you've been to a Doug Peltzman workshop. It's one of your favorites ever. His handles are awesome. Works of art. Yeah, he, he is so good with handles. And if 
you're struggling with handles, he will help you. And this is a two-part workshop. So we'll work together one weekend on a Saturday and then the following Saturday. So you have time to practice and then come back and if you have more questions and, and to be able to learn more with him, it's going to be great. So now you make your big decision of the night. Do you want to put texture in this or not? You do not have to. You can, but you don't have to. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to. <laughs> Did anybody expect anything less? This is one of my rolling pins. It's called Moroccan Tile. And for those who've asked about how my tiling project's going in the kitchen, it's still waiting to be done. <laughs> I will get to it eventually. It's on that list that never ends. So I'm gonna release this. See how wet the board is? It was sticking to it, so you have to release it. Now, if you find you're having a lot of difficulty with your clay sticking, I have a little trick. I gotta find where my little thing of cornstarch went though. There it is, it's caught. It's caught in my drawer. <laughs> Ow. Sorry everybody, I have a drawer. You know that drawer you have in your studio? Sometimes we have them in our kitchen. And it's where I keep all things like, oh, stamps, tape measure, note cards, my studio flash cards, and my cornstarch. I knew I'd get there. So if you find that your clay is super sticky, you can always do a dusting of cornstarch on the surface. This is just an old makeup brush. This is not anything fancy. So you can dust it. The cornstarch will not hurt the clay at all. It will not. And then you just pick the area you like the best and you cut it out. Look at that. Look at how easily this plastic released. Look at that. So easy. Let's do one down here. So you just line it up, press it in, and this is going to be the outside shape, right? The pumpkin. I'm just going to sit those to the side. Get one over here. And even though there's cornstarch all over this clay, I would completely wedge it up and wedge it together and keep using it and not worry about the cornstarch being a problem. The only thing it actually will do is dry out your clay a bit. So, ooh, do we have enough? Can we, can we, can we make it fit? Yes, just barely. And so the rest of this clay, I'll just wedge back up. If it's a little too dry, all you do is dip it in your little bucket of water and then put it back in your bag of clay and it'll be fine. All right, so now that we have these, some people like to use plastic to press through. I, I have found that doesn't work so well for me. I usually end up making more of a mess of it and crushing my clay, but I do like to use the plastic after to just softly round over my edges. And I'll go back anyhow with a sponge and smooth this all out later. Let's see, what else do we have to share? Oh, so last week for my premium members, did you guys catch the Glaze Q&A session? If not, you can check that out on ClayShare. I wanted to make sure you all knew about that. So here we have our little pumpkins. And now we're gonna do the fun part. We're gonna press them. And I have a piece of foam, upholstery foam. This one here, I believe this one was actually once upon a time, sorry about that, let me fix this, um, so I can focus. I believe this one was a pillow. Maybe it was a cushion, chair cushion. Can't remember anymore. I've had this for about 14 years. Don't remember. <laughs> so we're gonna line this up. Now, the next part, and this is a little DIY. The next part is, I have these little things, I call them pressers. They're basically bisque stamps. I use a cookie cutter and I roll out my clay, cut out a circle, attach a bit of clay to the back to make a handle. And you make them in all kinds of diameters. You can even add texture to them if you wanna press texture in. So this one right here, 
I don't really have a, it has to be this size. My guide is I want to have some space, but that's too much, right? So I need a bigger one. That one's too small. This one's the next size up, and I think that's about perfect. So I like to have about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch all the way around. Sometimes a quarter of an inch is too little, though. The pusher piece, I do have a tutorial on it, Jewel. That's a great question, yes. I do have a tutorial on how to make this. Um, I have a bisque stamp tutorial, and I do show you how to make one of these, possibly in the pumpkin trinket dish class. If not, I show how to make it in one of my other trinket dish classes. I'll have to look. So you line this up, and then you're just gonna press it down. Watch. Press, rock it a little bit, and it pops up. Look at that. So these are what's called pressed dishes or pressed plates because you press them. Some people call them pop plates. I have been making these for about 10 years. They've, they are, I didn't invent it. I'm sure it's been around much longer than I have. Uh, I started making plates like this because I needed a way to make big plates. I actually pressed large plates uh, pretty quickly and easily. So then you take your little pumpkin dish and you're gonna lift it up and you're gonna put it on a board Again, this is the same board that I'm working on, the same work board. And I just like to press it down again, just to make sure it's seated firmly on my board. And then you adjust the sides. You know, if one side's tilted up a little bit, you fix that. And so let's do the rest of these. It goes really fast. Once you have all of your pumpkins cut out, and again, they don't have to be pumpkins, right? It doesn't have to be. It could be circles. We'll make a circle. Let's do a circle after. See? And I just set them on the board like this. Usually I, I don't have to pull the board back on. I usually just let it sit off to the side. But I want you guys to be able to see it too. So we have the third one right here. And so I see a great question from Greg about how do you keep plates from warping? So I use what I call weight bags to keep them from warping. And I will just set it inside. And I make little ones and big ones. And I actually have a tutorial on how to make those. But I will use old shirt sleeves that I either tie the ends in the knot. And then I fill it with either kitty litter or rice, sand, whatever you have available. You can fill it. Some people fill it with beans. It's entirely up to you. So there we have four super cute look how cute those are and you might think they're thick but i'm going to show you something right now you want them sort of thick because let me show you one i made too thin and then let me show you the one that's thicker and we'll see if we can look at the edge here see if i can get close enough is that in focus is that in focus did it so do you see the one that i have in my right hand do you see how thick this is and you see how thick the one in my left hand is it's about half the thickness, the one in my left hand. But when you look at the front, you can see the one on in my right hand hasn't warped. The one on my left has a funny warp right here. Oftentimes, if your pieces are too thin, they will warp. So the folks that are watching on Instagram, I want you to see those edges. See how much thinner this one is than this one? It's okay if they're thick. Thickness isn't a problem. You want it consistently even. That's the issue. So warping happens when it's uneven when it's too thin, when it dries too fast, if it's sitting in the sunshine or has fan or a heater blowing on it, that can cause it to dry too fast. You know, those are all issues we have to consider. And when it's sitting on a wooden board like this, if you think about it, the wood is pulling moisture out of the bottom here. And although the air is on the top, the wood is pulling more moisture out sometimes. So it can start to warp, it's drying unevenly. So you have to keep that in mind too. So let's take that clay that I have left and I'm going to quickly wedge it up and we'll make a round one. And for this, I'm going to use something a little different. We're going to make a different one. So that's for my pumpkin lovers, right? Make cute pumpkin trinket dishes. And then make sure we're back in focus. So I'm just wedging up. Oh, maybe it's a, maybe it's a pound. 
probably three quarters of a pound of clay. And again, I'm not worried about the cornstarch, not at all. It won't be a problem. And I don't want to roll it too thin. We still want our thickness. We're going for five inches. We're good. We got it. Now, sometimes you'll have wedged your clay and you'll still get a little air bubble in there. Just smooth it out. And if it pops and it leaves behind a little, a little crater, you just fill it with the little bits of clay that come off your rib. I was hoping to get one. I don't, I don't see, see any. Maybe if I flip it over, there's one on the back. No, it's even. <laughs> I wedged it too well, you know. When you're looking for air bubbles, you can never find them. Now, I get asked a lot, do you have to have a kiln to make pottery? And I do want to let everybody know you don't have to have a kiln. You can use air dry clay. But if you want to make pottery that can be used for food, it has to go in a kiln. So you can make these cute trinket dishes that I'm showing you how to make and use them for candles or just decorative little ring holders with air dry or oven baked clays, but they're not for food. This has been fired in a kiln. So anything that's going to be used for food must go in a kiln. But that doesn't mean you can't make something if you don't have a kiln. You can do everything I'm showing you with air dry or oven baked clays. There's no reason you should say, well, I can't make pottery. I don't have a kiln. Try it. Try it and see if you like it. And if you do, you might want to consider either getting a kiln or maybe finding a clay center and you can use their kiln. So for this little guy, we're going to use this southwest pattern. I'm just going to roll this on in. This is going to be that circle dish. Did I, did I show the, the first one? This is what we're making. This guy right here. That's what we're going to do. This. I'm going to release it. And this is a five inch cookie cutter and I don't know if you can tell, it's rather warped. But it'll work. I'm going to line it up, cut it out. Then we release it. You see how easy the metal released? Metal release is much easier than plastic from clay. So if you're using the plastic pieces, just keep that in mind and you'll probably want to go ahead and use cornstarch on them. But with the metal, you can still use cornstarch, but they do release a lot easier. So now we have our circle. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to press it just like we did with the pumpkins. So here we have our little circle. I didn't smooth my edges with plastic but I should, so let's do that. Let's stop. That's the great thing is I can do that. So Greg, you're having a consistent issue with the warping on your, on your pieces. It, it can be troublesome, and I have to tell you, when I weigh things down with weight bags, I leave those weight bags on until it's bone dry. A few weeks ago in my private broadcast, we did a big lace platter. That lace platter is still being weighed down with weight bags. It's almost dry. It's pretty close to bone dry actually, but I am still weighing it down because I want to make sure it's completely dry before I put it in the bisque. And I want to make sure it's completely dry before I take those weight bags off too. All right, so here we have that five inch circle. This is a GR pottery form. It's a little three and a half inch one. It's the smallest circle one they make. Now, before I discovered GR pottery forms, I found this little um, wooden plaque I got from the hobby store. Those work great and they, get, they have smaller ones. So GR doesn't have smaller ones. I wish they did because I want to do little pressed trinket dishes, but they don't have smaller ones. So this is the smallest I can do with this method. Of course, I could always make my own little bisque presser, presser, right? I could always make my own and just use that. So now we're gonna line this up and you gotta look straight down at it. Get it as close to centered as possible. Press and rock. You can actually see how that's wrapped the sides. See how that's wrapped up the sides? And now, We're just going to flip it over, remove it from the form, and then, I don't know if you noticed, I have this cute little decorative edge 
from the circle. I'm going to show you how to create that right now. And I do have quite a few classes on doing like ruffled edges on wheel thrown bowls and on slab built pieces. So this is a nice way to do it. So you're going to take your thumb and forefinger and you're going to grab your clay and you're just going to pull up and press down. If you've made my maple leaf spoon rest, this is, this, this is what we do for a spoon rest. This could have been a spoon rest, but it's not going to be. It could have, but it's not. Do I want to do three or four? That, I'm going to do three, although I'm tempted to do four. So let's measure, let's see where three would be here. And then we'll turn it again. And that would be about here. Like that. So here we have our little dishes. And you, you can, you know, work with it a little bit to get your angle right. There. So this is like a little ruffled edge, little ruffled edge dish. And they're not meant to be, you know, spaced perfectly or anything, but they're just really fun to make. And I like adding that, that little ruffly bit in there. It just, it just gives it something. And here's a finished one. So you can see them both together. But that gets you that. So, I, and I see Terry had a suggestion about the cutting through plastic. Right, and I did talk about that, Terry, earlier in the broadcast. I don't cut through plastic. Um, for me, it, it just doesn't ever work as well as just smoothing the edges later. But I know a lot of people do that and they like it, so it's a good technique to use. I just don't use it myself. But there's, it's a great thing if it works for you. I think it's fabulous. All right, so let's see. So what I do with the weight bag, is it for drying? Yes, it's only for drying, Libby. Kev, do you want to grab a weight bag out of the mm -hmm. drawer over there when you get a sec? I'll show you all a weight bag. I mean, basically, I take old long sleeve shirts and I cut the sleeves off. I tie knots in one end, I tie a knot in one end, and then I fill it with kitty litter and then I tie a knot in the other end. You can also do it with a shirt the front, cut the front, you know, because you get that square fabric, and just pull your ends up. So this is one that was done that way. This was a, a shirt, and this is a smallish one. You make them whatever size you need them to be. It's just a little weight bag. And so this one here, just like that. Now I would put plastic on this first. <laughs> plastic, then the weight bag, um, because the weight bag will wick moisture out as well. So that's something to think about. But you see how easy this is? I wonder if I can open it up and show you what it looks like. This isn't supposed to be a weight bag tutorial tonight, but you know what? Doesn't matter. We could do it. And Angela asks, how long do I keep my weight bags on until they're, until they're bone dry? Uh, yeah. Let me just clean off. This is, in this is cat litter. Clean cat litter, folks. Not dirty. Do not recycle your cat litter that way. Don't do that. So this was a shirt of mine. It was this lovely magenta long sleeve shirt. This was actually a square fabric from the front or the back, right? One or the other. I poured a pile of cat litter. <laughs> it looks pretty shabby right now, doesn't it? I poured a pile of cat litter into the center. I grabbed the corners. I'm teaching you how to make a weight bag, folks. This is it. You grab the corners and then tuck any little bits up in. And because there's not much material here, you can't tie a knot. But here's the thing. All of our clay comes with these rubber bands. So you save them and you use them to make your weight bags. It's easy. You just wrap it around two or three times. Done. Weight bag made. Easy, right? And now I've got cat litter all over. So the problem with the cat litter, it's very dusty and very fine. Some people have found rice is better. Um, some people have used beans. I think beans might leave a little bit of like bumps. They're not as smooth. Some people have used play box sand, so that might work too. <laughs> so if the piece is sitting on a wooden board, you think the weight bag would help in drying? Um, I think it does. Yeah, because yeah, you think about that. That's a good idea. That's, that's good, Judy, actually. Yeah. So she has a great suggestion, a great, a great observation, actually, that the weight bag wicking the moisture it's sitting on a wooden board, which is wicking the moisture. So you got those two forces wicking moisture. It's not still 
even because we have that issue with the sides, but it does work really well. So for these little, do um, you want to grab a teeny weeny one? Probably in the very bottom. In the very bottom, if you dig down, there's some eensy weensies. You know, I make them out of everything. Socks, old socks. Here's a good one. This was, I don't even know what this shirt was. This was a something, right? This was a little bit of fabric, but this one's a little small. But I try to make them so they fill this area up right in here. And so it will weigh it down. But I just put them in here. And honestly, the trinket dishes, I probably won't use the plastic. The main reason I use the plastic is to keep the cat litter from coming through the fabric and getting into the clay. Because sometimes it doesn't, it stays. You see it even after it's been fired. Tips on how to add a foot ring to a press plate. Sure, I'll, let's do one. Do we have time? We got time. We got time. We got time. No, I won't give you a tip. I'm going to show you how to do it. But first, let's get rid of <laughs> all the cat litter. <laughs> get rid of the gritty kitty litter all over my work surface. Might need a little more clay. Maybe. All right, new lump of clay. Actually, I could have had you grab that slab. I already rolled out, but it's all right. You get to see the rolling tutorial all over again. This is um, normal speed. I usually work slow when I'm doing tutorials. So when I'm working on my own, things go a tiny bit faster. All right, so we have our slab rolled. And we will... What's that glazing thing in front of you? This is Frosted Mint from Clayscapes Pottery. That's this one right here. Frosted Mint, very thinly applied. It's actually one of my favorites if I want a minty green, although... There's my spearmint. So those who are looking at my spearmint versus frosted mint, you can see the difference. A and it is different. Frosted mint is a little um, thinner. And I believe it's, I'm going to say it's more yellow. And my spearmint might be more blue. That's what I'm going to say. I could be wrong. Have they done any of your glazes as brushable? My chun is brushable. My chun blue glaze is brushable from Clayscapes for those who are interested. Um, that might be the only one currently that they've done. But that, others are coming down the road. Yeah, they're working on it. They have to reformulate all their glazes to turn it into a brushable glaze. So it takes months of testing and development. So that's, that's why they don't happen as fast as we all would like them to. All right. Here we have... Oh gosh, we can get so many out of these. So we're just going to cut this here. That's the circle one. Can we get a pumpkin out of this? We're going to get a, a crazy southwestern pattern pumpkin. Southwest pumpkin, folks. And then the rest we'll just wedge up and put it back in the bag. Actually, I'm going to grab it back out because we're going to make a foot with it. All right, so just like I pressed, how would I make a foot? This is how. I will take my little clay circle, line up my form or whatever I'm pressing it with, press down, flip it over. Now, we're going to put a foot on this. So let's grab the clay that I just put over there. We're going to wedge this quickly and roll it out. So Amazon has a stainless steel rolling pin with graduated measured circles to get even thickness on dough, and it probably worked for clay. It might. Yes. Yeah, it might. That's definitely something to think about trying. Right? I have to tell you though, I love, I use my slab roller almost every day. I just adore it. It was the best present I think Kevin got me. Well, I think it might be. So here we have a strip of clay. 
And here we have, I've got dishes everywhere. <laughs> and here we have our little dish. Now you've got a couple options. We could do something simple like, you know, tear off a few little chunks of clay, roll them up in the balls, and have little ball feet, right? And you could attach them and have little ball foot dish. Be cute. So you just roll them up, space them out, three or four, and you slip and score them and attach them. We're going to do something a little different. Let's see if I got enough clay there. Yeah, we do. So usually I'll use a foot maker, which is a tool that I have a free tutorial. That's another one on how to make your own. It's basically a corn on the cob holder that you file the edges and then you kind of open it up a little bit. This is it right here. So this is my go-to for making a foot because you just put this into your clay, pull it along, and it's done. You made a foot super fast. The next best thing is if you have these thickness strips, these are used for getting the thickness of your slab even, right? And you just go ahead and you cut a strip like this, and now you can make a foot ring. So you can use that. And let me just show you how a foot maker works. Just go ahead, hold your clay, and just pull it straight through. And the thing I like about the foot maker is you get a taper, and you put the wider part on the bottom of the plate. So either one will work. So if you don't have a foot maker, you're good to go. Let me go ahead and grab some slip. And we'll slip and score this and we'll stick it on. So we're just going to go ahead and slip and score the bottom of this dish. And then the same thing. This slip is magic water that I've just mixed the B-Mix clay with. That's the clay I'm using tonight. And then we go ahead and attach. And you see it's still on the form. I haven't taken it off the form at all. We have an overlap, so we're going to cut through both pieces. And I'm going to leave this on the form until after this foot is secured on here because it's supporting it. I don't have to worry about the piece collapsing. It's going to stay exactly in the shape I want it to stay in. So now we're just smoothing. Then I'm just going to pinch. And as I'm smoothing this out, I'm also pressing down a bit, helping to secure it. And then smooth the inside. Now, we're going to flip it over. Let me grab a board. So here's the other one we made already, right here. And for the flipping, there was some kitty litter from my weight bag on that. We're going to go over here. I don't, I don't have room down there. So I'm just going to flip this over. If it was a big piece, like a bigger plate, let me just show you what I'd do. If it was a bigger plate, I would just take my board, sit my board on it, and flip the entire thing like that. And then you pop this out. This will come right off, like that. And then if you want to do that same detail that we did, this detail here, you can go ahead and do that. I went the opposite way. I'll go this way. You can go either way. It's entirely up to you. And we're doing thirds? Yes, we're doing thirds. So let's turn this like that. So look at the cute little footed dish. There's its foot, there's its foot, and then compared to the one without the foot. So very similar, one with foot, one without, made basically the same way. It's just whether you put a foot ring on it or not. So I think that's it. That's it. That's all. So these will dry. I will um, use a weight bag on this, but I won't put it on yet. So here's the thing. 
the one without the foot. I could put the weight bag right now on it. As long as it's not touching the edges here and doesn't crush my sides down, it could be on there. But the one we put the foot ring on, we cannot put the weight bag on because what will happen is we'll get sagging in the middle. So you have to wait until it's stiffened up. Usually, usually the next day. Usually the next day, usually I'll cover this with plastic as is. So we'll just drape it, you see the plastic. Drape with plastic like this, see? Let it sit in your studio, come back the next day, and then you can use a weight bag. But I have found sometimes these little dishes like this, I don't really have much warping on them. It's when they get bigger we get into warping because you have larger expanses of clay. So there we have it. Oh, we got one more, we got one more pumpkin dish to press. Let's quickly do that. I can't, I can't leave this guy unpressed. That would be, that would be unfair. <laughs> That'd be cruel, and I wouldn't want to do that. He'd be left out. All right, so we'll do this one. And if you want to put feet on your pumpkin dishes, just like, just like I showed you to do with the other one, you could put feet on it. Press down, and then we'll just transfer it over here. So Christine says she loves the ruffles. It's a great way to dress it up. And you know what? We only did three on this one, but I tell you what, you can never have too many ruffles. So here's the thing. You could say, oh, no, no, no. We're going to have six ruffles. So I'm going to go ahead and put six ruffles in. You can put as many in as you want. So then it gets a little crazy, but in the best possible way, right? So now I just put a lot of ruffles in. And you could keep going. I mean, it could just be bumps all over from the ruffles. And if you don't like the way they're spaced, the clay is still soft enough, you can alter them a little bit. I feel like we could do another one. Put these two a little closer. Maybe switch this one. See, our clay is wet enough that I can make these decisions and change it up. i put another one here. Like that. You can just keep going. Okay, I got a little carried away here. This is what happens. Shouldn't have said anything about the ruffles because now I'm like, ooh, yes, more ruffles. But you can decide how many ruffles you like and if you're like, well, that's, that's enough for me and you can stop there. But now I've made like a, this crazy ruffle dish, right? And if you don't like them, you can smooth most of them out and start over. And anyways, it's just clay. So if you really don't like it, you can make another one because it doesn't take any time at all and you can wedge it right back up and use it again. So easy, right? All right, I think that's, I think that's all I got tonight. Um, I know it's a little early. I usually go to almost five, almost six, sorry. But since I've been under the weather, I'm gonna stop a little early tonight and um, I'll be back next week though. I think maybe next week I might show you a staining technique so you and maybe glazing too because this little dish right here is is one that I have a lot of depth in I want to make sure you can see and to achieve that I used underglaze first and then wiped back a lot and then glazed on top so we might do this it's another way to get depth in your pieces and to really show off your texture so I think that might be next week's next week's class that's my plan. And of course, if you have suggestions for things you want to see me make and see me do, you just let me know and I will do it because that's what I'm here for. All right, everyone, have a fabulous week. Take care of yourself and I will see my premium members at 6.15 for prime time and everybody else I'll catch next week for live at five. Bye, everybody.